Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Julio. I want to thank you so much for stopping by this video. And thank you if you watched the last video and you subscribed to the transformation videos. I did not expect that much of subscriptions, like 20 people subscribed. I really, I want to thank you so much. I'm sorry if I haven't been providing any content. If you check out the link in the description box, you'll see that I have an Italian channel and I've really concentrated on university, finishing my master's degree and growing my Italian channel. So that's where I put most of my efforts. I just tried out the transformation video here in English to see if there would be at least some interest and you have shown it. So I'm super, super grateful for that. And I can't wait to provide you with some consistent content starting from today. So this is the first video where I'll show you my diet in a flexible diet manner so if it fits your macros I was in a cutting phase for about eight weeks and I lost eight or nine kilos basically I've done I did this after my winter bulk to try and cut down for summer do you have to do that actually if you're a natural it's probably better to take at least one or two years where you simply bulk and you throw in some mini cuts however since I'm on social media I need to be show the part if you know what I mean also on the beach unfortunately this is the truth of my job I lost eight kilos and now I am currently in my diet break so it probably came down to about 11 12 13 percent body fat I can't really be sure but it's about that range you can see my abs but it's not like crazy shredded definition I was noticing my performance drop in the gym I was noticing that my calories had gone really low my metabolism had slowed down so I'm gonna do two weeks where I eat a bit more food so that's what I'm gonna show you today Please like the video if you like the video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's get it started. I just want to show you current setup. I am currently working, sipping on some water and drinking a monster white zero calories because I practice intermittent fasting. So basically first meal of the day, I just postpone it of a couple hours. Doing some editing here. This is a journal where I write down everything I need to get done in the day. This is simply my room here in Barcelona. I've got a TV hanging on the wall, a drum kit because I used to play the drums. I got a fan because it's freaking warm here in Barcelona. And yeah, this is just the current setup. Okay, so it's 1.40 now. I haven't eaten anything as I've said. I'm doing intermittent fasting. Not everyone has to do intermittent fasting. It might not be the most optimal thing if you want to grow muscle. I would just recommend it if you're struggling to be in a caloric deficit. For example, myself, I have a crazy appetite and even when I'm on maintenance, I'll still be hungry. So I do intermittent fasting so that my next meals, I, they can be more like more substantial in terms of calories and they can fill me up better, you know, compared to having a lot of small meals. And to just skip breakfast, have a monster, have a coffee, drink some water and then have my first meal or snack later on in the day. So this is what we got today. Natural chocolate flavor, impact weight protein. This is some protein powder. I'll have just a scoop which is 20 grams of protein. You don't really need whey protein. It's just very helpful if you're traveling or simply if you don't want to cook all the time, you don't want to cook meats and stuff. So this is very practical. It's not essential at all to build a good physique. And I also have a Greek style natural yogurt. I'll put the calories and macronutrients on the screen right now. It would be amazing if I had some fruit at home, but unfortunately I don't have any fruit. So this will be it. And so this will be my pre-workout meal. The important thing is that you consume about 20 to 30 grams of protein. If you have carbs or you don't, that's up to you, okay? The important thing is that for protein synthesis, if you haven't had, for example, a big protein meal the night before or for breakfast, then before your workout, for example, like me, you wanna consume 20 grams of protein. So that's why I'm having my protein powder. I'm throwing in some yogurt also for some more protein, but also some carbs. And as I said, if I had some fruit, that would be amazing. If I had some apricots or kiwi or banana, something like that, for a bit more carbs, unfortunately, I don't have them at home right now. We'll buy them together later. So this is my pre-workout meal and snack number one of the day. Like honestly guys, if you've never tried, instead of drinking a shake, just making this amazing little cream from it, it's so much better. Mm -mm -mm. And also if you have any digestive issues, which sometimes occur when you have a shake, just doing this instead, basically just makes it more solid and more enjoyable. And I had some issues before with digesting whey protein, but now doing it this way, it's amazing. Literary supplements are not the be all end all. They make it out to be as if they're fucking amazing and you get really big thanks to supplements. They don't do anything. They supplement a good diet. Let's say that you have to have your diet and nutrition and training nailed down and this maybe will give you that 5% more uh, aesthetic look because with the pre-workout your performance probably improves thanks to creatine and some caffeine. Instead the size is just a pump product. This has nitric oxide in it and you get a bigger pump. The products are fairly cool. They mix really well but yeah enough publicity. Let's go to the gym. Okay guys, so I'm literally sat right here on my moped. This is a cool thing about Mediterranean countries like Spain, Italy, Greece. We go basically everywhere with some very small mopeds. You don't really have this in the UK or the US. In the US it's all like really big cars, but we don't have that many parking spaces here in Europe, especially here in Barcelona. 
it's very crammed the traffic is quite a bit so you need you need to get a moped if you come to the city to here in barcelona and the cool thing is that this is some sharing sort of application it's called equal truck they're basically scattered around the city you just pick it up you can drive it where you want you leave it you maybe pay two or three euros it's just a tiny bit more expensive than um, public transport but honestly it's way cooler and way faster and it's just amazing so that's one thing we're gonna go to the gym right now on this moped i can't wait to smash the workout right, so we literally just parked my moped right there i'm gonna walk now to the gym it took me literally just five minutes zooming through the traffic i really pride myself on my driving skills because i learned in rome and if you've ever been in rome it's just fucked up it's like another planet anyway the cool thing is that the gym is basically in the city center and if you get a moped you can just basically go with five minutes it's not going to take you that much longer instead if you take the bus then it's, you get stuck, stuck in traffic and it's way longer so the fitness club i go to it's called you can see maybe down there it's a bit dark i don't know if you can see it this club is called do it fit via augusta and it's a really cool club i'll show you right now and the cool thing is that they allow me to film allow me to come in for free so that's the best of two, two worlds really the cool thing about this gym on a saturday is that it's completely empty so if you're looking for a gym on a saturday which is empty to have a good workout come to this gym Okay, so here we go, officially with the first ever voiceover on this channel. Guys, make sure to leave a like if you're liking the style up to now. Uh, one thing that I really, really want to do with the channel is provide very valuable and informative uh, content for you guys. So with some key practical takeaways that you can actually go and apply to your own training, which means that I will try and include some of these voiceovers where I might talk about a scientific topic that you can actually apply in practice. For a natural lifter, we should always start our uh, exercises or our sessions with compound movements, so movements that actually recruit uh, more than just one single muscle group. So for example, today was back day, I would have started with a barbell row, so horizontal pull, or a vertical pull, such as a weighted chin-up. However, you see me here doing some seated cable rows. Why is this? Right now, I am doing three things, let's say. First of all, I have a small injury on the shoulder, so I'm being very careful with the movements I choose. I've also had to reduce the load uh, to make sure I don't want to aggravate the injury. And by reducing the load, instead of just taking time off, I can actually provide some stimulus for growth for hypertrophy, uh, since it has been shown that like with loads of above of 30% of 1RM or greater, we can actually still stimulate muscle hypertrophy to a large extent. And secondly, since it's my uh, diet break, I am also having a deload week, so I'm basically just taking a break from lifting heavy. And if you think about muscle hypertrophy for uh, us lifters, basically means gaining muscle. There are three main mechanisms as Dr. Brad Schoenfeld outlined in his uh, mechanism for muscle hypertrophy literature review. And we've got obviously mechanical tension, which is the main uh, driver of, of growth, which is basically creating a sufficiently high and prolonged tension on the muscle fibers to induce a primary stimulus of muscle hypertrophy, which is basically progressing in the gym, progressing with weights, progressing with reps, and over time getting basically stronger, being able to do more workload, this is mechanical tension. Uh, however, when I'm at this po point in time, what you're seeing here is the second mechanism of muscle hypertrophy, which is metabolic stress. And metabolic stress basically means the accumulation of metabolic agents in the muscle, such as lactate, phosphate, H+, and hypoxia during the training. It's basically what we feel when the muscle is burning, right, with the pump. And metabolic stress seems to contribute to muscle growth because, among other things, it also increases the number of recruited fibers and increases the release of hormones. But the key word is could. For example, Dr. Marcus Rattel is a very big proponent of metabolic stress. However, for example, Menno Hanselman actually says we should not actively look for it during our training. But basically, since it's one of the mechanisms uh, yet for muscle hypertrophy, uh, when you increase higher reps, you can also still achieve a similar amount of muscle hypertrophy probably mechanical tension will be slightly reduced especially in the deal of week however uh, you are actually tapping into this metabolic stress because you're getting a pump and you're basically accumulating metabolites so this is the main thing i wanted to get across the main key point which is you can train with higher reps even for a natural lifter i would usually do it only in some occasions if you want to put more emphasis on metabolic stress for example after three weeks of a normal um, program then the fourth week you can add in metabolite work where you're actually increasing your repetitions or, for example, if you're injured or if you have an injury, instead of just taking time off, it's kind of a similar uh, principle to katsu training, you know, where they basically blood flow occlusion, which could actually heal the um, injured area without actually affecting it too much because you're using very light loads. So please leave it a like. If you have any questions, I'll leave it in the comments. If you want me to expand on any topics, let me know and enjoy the rest of the video. Pretty much, and then one year 
uh, and then three years actually following scientific research, which is where I've seen the most changes. So, I'm trained back today in a bicep, so there's no bump in the front, no bump in the chest, nothing. Okay guys, so I'm walking home. It's so freaking warm here in Barcelona. It's crazy. It must be like 35 degrees C, not Fahrenheit degrees C, which is really warm. Uh, but I still try and get in as many steps as possible. And this is one of the smartest and easiest way to do cardio. You see a lot of people going to the gym and maybe killing themselves doing high intensity uh, training. Sorry, guys. Camera died right there. The only thing I was saying is that why not instead of just spending hours on the cardio machines doing high intensity interval training or doing steady state cardio inside the gym, you can very easily just move more by walking to places instead of taking public transport. So for example, when I go to the gym, I get the moped because I want to get pumped, I want to feel the adrenaline, I want to have energy, but when I'm walking back, I, instead of taking the moped and it takes five minutes, I actually walk up on an incline for 30 minutes. I try to get my steps up and that's a great way to burn calories, to burn fat and create a calorie deficit if you need to do so, right? So instead of just taking the car everywhere, try walking. It's so much, so easy. And you can listen to podcasts or you can answer client emails or client messages. That's what I do when I walk usually, I just put in my AirPods and I just answer client emails. Anyway, we've got back home. Let's make some lunch, late lunch, something like that, Spanish lunch. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we got from a supermarket. This is some turkey breast, but it's really good quality. I love the turkey breast here in Spain. It's just amazing, tastes amazing. Everything is very, very local produced, so these are great. I also got some beef steaks here and just some 90% lean beef mince. I also got some peaches, as I was saying. These are amazing, tastes amazing here in Spain. And also, as you can see here, some very weirdly mixed cherry tomato. Obviously, some cereal. I'll probably have a bowl or two later on today. Then for lunch, what are we gonna do? The beef mince, and I'm gonna do 250 of these tagliatelle pasta al uovo. Obviously, I'm Italian, so I need to include some pasta into that. Put, cook them in some wonderful tomato sauce, which has basically really, really not that many calories at all. And when you add it in, it just tastes amazing. It's kind of like pre-made tomatoes and some onions, but no oil, nothing like that. The calories are amazing. So lunch is gonna be this, this, this. And while I cook, I'm gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna have a peach, why not? I don't know if you can see it, but look at how juicy this peach is. This is amazing Spanish peach. Here we are with our first meal of the day. Look at this amazing bowl of pasta. This has got 200 grams of those tagliatelle, 200 grams of the lean minced beef with some cherry tomatoes on top and some 200 ml of tomato sauce. If you wanna know how to make proper pasta like an Italian, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's, it looks amazing, guys. Let me know in the comments. This, whoever says that pasta cannot be healthy, look at this plate. It's got protein, carbs, perfect for post-workout. I'll leave the macronutrients on the screen right now. And this is also why I love intermittent fasting, guys. You can and here we are with the next meal. Here is a mix of white and brown rice. I tend to cook the rice just once per week at the beginning of the week and just store it for the next week. So instead of cooking 50 grams each time, I just cook 500 and then when I need it, I eat it. So this is some white and brown rice. Here we have the turkey breast, which I just went to buy, which is absolutely delicious. And we, here we've got the cherry tomatoes. Calories and macros on the screen right now. So here we are with the next meal, guys. I've got half a cucumber right there, some tuna right here. And then I went up and picked up this hummus for a bit more fat, some good fats. And it comes with these like little, I don't know, salty cracker sort of thing. I'm gonna dip them in here. And these are some carbs, some fats. And if you notice, I try and get always some protein with all my meals. And then I'll probably have a glass or two of this Diet Coke. And everyone who says, oh, Diet Coke, you're gonna die of cancer and stuff like that. Well, it's better than regular Coke and we're only human, you know? We don't smoke, we don't drink that much. And you can have a glass of Coke if you want. So this is gonna be the next meal. 
Okay, so last meal of the day, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna have just some of these multigrain flakes classic cereals. I'll have 50 grams for a bit of carbs and I'm gonna pour this semi-scale milk over it. These should be about 100, 150 ml. And this is gonna be basically my bowl of cereal before going to bed and the total calories and macronutrients of the day, I'll put them up on the screen. I've tracked everything fairly accurately today just to film this full day of eating. However, I usually just track really carefully when I'm cutting down on a dieting phase when I'm in maintenance or uh, surplus to build muscle, then actually I just try and count calories and protein and fats and carbs. I keep them varied so that I can be flexible in my lifestyle. So this is gonna be the final meal. I hit approximately 2,500 calories, which is my maintenance, maybe plus five or 10%. Remember that I was, I was finishing my diet on 1,800 calories, so I basically bumped them up quite a bit, uh, but that's basically what you wanna do on a diet break. And if you gain one or two uh, kilos, it's probably just water weight, glycogen to go and fill up your muscles and you're probably not gonna gain that much fat in just two weeks. But remember that these are my numbers specifically, so numbers for you might change in terms of body composition, in terms of your weight, uh, how many times you train per week, in terms of your statistics. So I am an online coach, so if you are looking for somebody who knows what he's doing, I already coach quite a few clients, and either to build muscle or lose fat, just drop me an email at the address that I'll leave linked below or in the first comment, and I'm a certified personal trainer. So if you do wanna work with me, shoot me an email and we'll get you set up with your one-off training plan or a nutrition plan completely science-based or a coaching package, whatever you want. Mail is in the description box below. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you stayed until the end, I wanna thank you, I don't know, it's probably just me and you right now. So thank you so much. Leave it a like, it really helps me out. Maybe share this channel with some friends, tell them about me. I really thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.